Today I'm going to do single rider attractions. Some are more secret than others, but I'm going to let you guys in on the details with that. And we'll go do the single rider rides at Disneyland first, and then we'll go over to DCA and hit those single riders over there. So let's go have some fun. this video because somebody in the comments specifically asked it's a party of two and in this case one person doesn't like to or is not able to ride faster attractions and likes the dark rides so I'm going to show the, the single rider lines that you can do that way if you need to leave kids or other family members behind you can go quicker on the attractions rather than waiting in the standby lines and I'll show you guys some spots in the shade and some benches and stuff near the attractions such as Space Mountain and the Matterhorn right there in the background I'll show you guys where you can leave loved ones to wait while you're on the attractions themselves. So let's get into the thick of it. We're going to go on Matterhorn today. We're going to hit up Space Mountain. Now Space Mountain is a tricky one because it sometimes has a single rider and it sometimes doesn't. I'm going to go and look and investigate and I'll ask a cast member if it doesn't have a single rider sign. Because on the Disneyland website it says there is single rider available for that now. And some things are a little more secretive, like Winnie the Pooh has a buddy pass, but that's not advertised online at all. And there's no signage to let you know about that either. You just have to ask a cast member and if they have them available, they'll give you a buddy pass. And we'll also do Millennium Falcon Smugglers Run because that's the single rider here in Disneyland. Those are the three official ones, Space Mountain, Matterhorn, and Smugglers Run. And then we'll go over to DCA. There are much more single rider attractions over at DCA. So we'll hit those ones afterwards. All right, so I got some coffee from the DVC lounge and it is not busy. My first impression of today is, wow, I'm surprised that there aren't more people here right now. Usually at this time of day, it's about two o'clock. It's usually really packed. Some of the lines aren't too long right now, but first things first, before doing rides, the last set of the bootstrappers is coming up at 2.30. So I'm gonna catch them since I love them so much. And then we'll go on rides after that, but bootstrappers first. Everyone's looking at the baby ducks, but look at how long this lizard is. Holy cow. He's like a good 12 inches long. He's about a foot long. Might be hard to tell because there's nothing to put it in scale. He's just kind of very slowly moving along there.
like a freaking off the line. <laughs> I mean, he a Russian, I get pissed. Uh, Maggie, Maggie, Maggie May, they have taken her away. What a treat that was. That felt like the longest set they've done in a long time. That was like two songs longer than it normally is. They played Maggie May, The Mermaid. They played like six to seven different songs, including their intro song, While They're Walking. It was really, really great. Oh, and they played Streams of Whiskey. I love that song. It was a lot of fun. Like the energy was really great in the audience. Sometimes people just walk by them and don't really participate. There's a lot of people having fun and clapping. I love the bootstrappers. You have to see them if you're here. I cannot emphasize that enough. All the entertainment at Disneyland is why I keep coming back all the time. I love the entertainers. They curate the best talent possible. Disney just has a special knack for that. But anyways, that was amazing. I digress. Let's start our day of single rider lines. I am right here at Winnie the Pooh, if you can't tell by the background here. This is a great creek to see some of the baby ducklings too. A lot of times they'll be swimming in this little creek, this little babbling brook here. But I'm gonna go ask the cast member nicely if they have any buddy passes today. The line is not that long, so I don't know if they actually will. It usually is on days when the line is a lot longer. The standby line looks maybe five minutes long right now, which is incredible. Today is like the least busy I've seen it in a very, very long time, which I really appreciate. So single rider is not always open unless they are at like high capacity in the lines. Um, I'd say if this gets like a 20 minute wait, then they'll be doing single rider. But I'm gonna go ask them about it just in case and just see the lowdown on it, see if I can get some information, but I will ask very nicely and I'll let you guys know what they say. All right, so I asked about it, and if the line is less than 10 minutes, they do not do single rider, but this is better than a normal single rider. Their buddy pass lets in three people, so if you have parties of three or less, go to the cast member at the front of Winnie the Pooh, and they'll give you a pass to go through the exit, actually. It's called the buddy pass system. Same one they use at Monsters Incorporated ride, and a lot of people don't know about that because there's no sign, and it's not advertised online or anything like that. It's just something that you need to know about, and if you go up and ask a cast member nicely, they will gladly accommodate and help you out. But today it does not apply, it's not applicable because the line was five minutes, which is incredible. I haven't seen the line for that that short in a long time. Today's wait times are much lower than they generally are. So we'll see how this little test run goes today. But I think uh, single rider is gonna be pretty short overall. I'm gonna look at the standby time and compare them to the single rider wait that I actually wait in and I'll let you guys know the difference. All right, so I asked, and Space Mountain does have a single rider right now. It's at the exit of uh, Space Mountain. So don't go in the entrance tunnel like I did. Go around the exit where the restrooms are over there on the other side of the Starcade, the uh, Star Trader. And you can go into the line by yourself if you're a single rider. This is a 60-minute wait, so let's see if it's shorter doing single rider. people in front of me for single rider this is gonna be like walk on it's gonna be about one two minute wait this is quicker than lightning lane would be this is incredible incredible to be able to save that much time it's a 60 minute wait normally and this is no wait at all so definitely check out single rider at space mountain it should work out in your favor All right, so Space Mountain was three minute wait total to get on the single rider line. Incredible, I love that ride. It's exhilarating, makes you scream and laugh every single time. Never gets old, I love that one. 
but there are plenty of benches at the exit of it. So if you're not riding it, if you have someone with you that doesn't like roller coasters, there are plenty of benches in the shade at the exit of Space Mountain. And there's also a plethora of seating around Pizza Planet and around Galactic Grill and Tomorrow Landing. There are plenty of tables over here with umbrellas for shade. So that's a good spot to leave a loved one or a family member waiting if they do not want to ride it with you and if you want to ride the single rider. That one's great though, definitely worth it. Try that one out. All right, I have a feeling this one's gonna be a longer wait, but we're gonna go try out Matterhorn now and see how the single rider for that is. So we'll see if it saves time. I think the ride wait time for Matterhorn was actually less than Space Mountain right now, but I have a feeling the single rider line is gonna be longer. It's well advertised and a lot of people do use that one. So there usually is a line for that, but we'll see if it saves time or not. Matterhorn was a 45 minute posted wait time, which is not too bad. I saw it 75 minutes just the other day. So even 45 minutes is not that bad of a deal actually. But the single rider took 19 minutes. Like I said, the single rider is a little different on that one. They put you in with the main line pretty quickly. So you do have to wait through part of the queue still. Unlike the other rides where you can bypass the entire queue and, and just enter from the exit. So it does change things a little bit. I did wait 19 minutes, but compared to a 45 minute standby, which went up to 60 minutes by the time I got on, I noticed the line was getting longer and they adjusted the wait time on the app. That is a significant reduction in wait time to wait only 19 minutes. That one's really fun, great one to do. It really jerks you around though. I think the left side more jerky than the right side. The side towards Tomorrowland, man, it really jerks you around. I don't think that ride hurts or anything. I still do it all the time. It gives people a bad impression and there's a bad reputation for it, but I really don't think that ride's too bad. Kind of knocks your knees around though in the front. I was in the front row and it was like knocking my knees back and forth, but you know. We're gonna go to another planet now. We're gonna go through space and travel to Batu. How do you guys say it? I've heard it Batu, Batu, or Batu. There's like three different pronunciations out there, but Batu is the most common one. That's how I say it. But we're gonna go there and we're gonna try out Smuggler's Run, Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, and we'll do the single rider. That one's usually pretty quick. I'll look at the wait time, the standby time, and we'll see how long it actually takes me in single rider. So let's do that. really cold in space today. I don't know what's going on, but the air conditioning is cranking. It's like 68 out, but it's like 60 degrees in here. So I'm gonna do single rider for Smuggler's Run, and it's only a 20 minute standby wait anyways, so I think single rider will just be pretty much a walk. So weapons engage. Right pilot, get the boosters. Now let's go get the out. Right pilot, wave the jump to light speed. Light speed to Endor! which is the up and down inverted controls. It did pretty good. We got two things of coaxium. So that's better than the last few times I rode it with groups of people where we only got one thing of coaxium. I mean, I damaged the ship. I really damaged the ship and they said Chewy was gonna be mad, but you know, I did the best I could. The droids though that pilot it are not very good and the droids that shoot and stuff, they're really, uh, they're, they call them second rate droids, he said, and they really do not do the job very well. So there's only so much you can do. It wouldn't steer left and right though. And uh, yeah, we hit a lot of things, but you know, it could have been worse. But that was a lot of fun. I mean, I did not wait. There was no wait time. So that counts as one minute just to walk through the queue and get to single rider. Yeah, that's really incredible though. So for Matter Matterhorn, if you have people waiting for you, there is Edelweiss, the restaurant right across the way. And there's shaded seating right across from the Matterhorn. So you can leave someone there while you ride it. And for Batu, there's plenty of shade around the area. There's even like a bench you'll see as I walk out here. There's a bench right there by the exit. And there's some other benches around. You're just gonna have to look around for shade specifically. If you go to Docking Bay 7 right next to Smuggler's Run, you can leave someone in there. Or in the marketplace, there's a lot more shade too.
So I'm going over to DCA now and start single riders over there. There's a lot more of them over there. So we'll see what we can get done today. I'll just skip the ones that are too long looking and I'll just show you guys them, but probably not go on them. But first, I am famished. That's just me being dramatic. I'm not really famished. I'm very hungry though. So let's go get some food first. The hot dog of the month over at Craftsman is a pastrami dog, which sounds amazing. I love me a good hot dog, so let's go try the glizzy of the month out. All right, so I went over to Craftsman and I tried out the hot dog of the month and it was incredible. One of the best hot dogs they've ever had there. Nine and a half out of 10 for me. I give it a perfect 10, but I very rarely, actually I've never given anything a perfect 10. So that's a lie. I was gonna say I very rarely do that, but yeah, that's never happened yet. I think everything can always be improved a little bit. In this case, I think a brown mustard or even just more mustard on it in general would have been really, really nice. It would have added to it greatly. But nine and a half out of 10, it had tons of pastrami on it had melted cheese. The pastrami was nice and thick and tender. The hot dogs themselves are always very flavorful. They seem to be like 100% beef franks and they're really thick. I like how they toast the bun all the time. And it came with a really nice coleslaw, mayonnaise based coleslaw on top. It was just super, super good. My favorite part was the pickle spear. You got a quarter of a pickle and it tasted like the normal Disneyland pickles, which is funny because I was going to get a spicy pickle, but the only place that I know of off the top of my head that has the spicy pickles is in Adventureland, the little shop in Adventureland. And I didn't make my way over there. I was passing the one in Fantasyland though, and they only had regular pickles, so I didn't get one. But that got my, uh, <laughs> I was going to say that tickled my pickle craving. I don't know. That just sounds weird. I don't know if I, that sounds really bad in a weird way. That satisfied my craving for pickles. So that was really, really good. I'd highly recommend that. You have till the end of March to get that one. The bartenders there that I know, they were like, this is a 10 out of 10 hot dog. And they are right. They all loved it. And you know, they work there. They know what's good and what's not good. This one was really good. Far superior compared to some of the hot dogs they've had in the past. This was far superior. It was amazing. Definitely would recommend that one. And you always get the same fries on the side. They're those nice, thin fries. They're the shape of steak fries, but they're very thin and very crispy. I like to get a side of barbecue sauce with those. Just really good. Overall, a really, really good lunch. I am full and I am happy. $14 well spent. It's starting to get a little chilly now, so I got my sweater on, and we're gonna try out Soren first. I know that Soren sometimes has a single rider line. It doesn't have a sign for it, and it's not advertised, but online it says there is a single rider for Soren, so let me go talk to the cast members and ask them nicely, and we'll see. I swear it, pal. All right, so Soren took me 11 minutes until the pre-show and 17 minutes until I was seated on the ride itself. Very short wait time for that. It was 45 minutes. It's been really long. It's been a lot more than 45 minutes lately anyways. The lightning lane has gone as far as the Pluto meet and greet by the airplane out front. It's been really, really congested because it's Soren over California and a lot of people want to ride that since it is a limited time ride right now. Great attraction. I love the California version of that. Really awesome. To wait only 11 minutes though is incredible versus the 45 minute posted wait time. That was a really good deal. So this is one of the secret ones. Don't tell anybody about this. It's not really secret. It's just not advertised. It's kind of like Soren. You wouldn't really know because there's no sign that says single rider. There's no anything about that. But another one is Monsters Inc. There's nothing about it that says single rider. Even online, this is not posted. Soren is online. Monsters Inc. is not listed online, but you can get a buddy pass the same as Winnie the Pooh. It's a 60 minute wait right now. So let's see if we can get a buddy pass and that lets you go through the exit. And I think you can bring up to two people, maybe even three with the buddy pass. Cause I know at Winnie the Pooh, you can bring three people, but yeah, let's go try that out and see if it saves time. Last time it was a walk on doing the buddy pass and you can bypass the 60 minute wait. So let's go do that. Oh, can I please have a buddy pass? It is a little bit longer of okay. a wait than usual. No worries. Uh, the line's right outside the door to send to your letter. Okay, thanks for warning me. And normally, can you bring up to three people with a buddy pass? Or three it, separate, or is it just single? If you're able to fit in one row, you can. If gotcha. not, it's going to have to be a two and a one. Okay, perfect. Okay. Appreciate you. Thank you very much. 
confirmed nor denied the presence of a human child here tonight. I tried to run from it, but it picked me up with its mind powers and shook me like a dog. It's true! I saw the whole thing! Get you home! <laughs> All right, so the buddy pass I confirmed is good for two people, three people if you have a child because you can all fit in the same row. The caveat is that you have to all fit in the same row. So I wouldn't try to cram three adults there, but two adults and a child would work fine for that. It took six minutes. They did warn me that it was going to take longer than usual because it was a one hour standby wait and the lightning lane was very, very backed up for that. But it didn't take longer than usual. Six minutes is no wait at all. That's pretty much a walk on. So they were being very efficient with the buddy pass system today. Awesome. I highly recommend doing that one. It's a cute little dark ride and there's not a lot of dark rides over here in DCA. This is going to be the real test. We're going to go over to Radiator Springs Racers and try out the single rider for that. I think that's going to be the most popular single rider in this park, except for Incredicoaster. Maybe is pretty popular too, but Incredicoaster is closed for refurbishment today, so there's no way we can tell on that one. Let's go over to Cars Land and do Radiator Springs Racers and see if that saves us any time. So Radiator Springs Racers and Cars took 29 minutes in line. When I got in the single rider line, I thought it might be longer than that. It was a 105 minute standby wait. So 29 minutes is a really good bargain. That single rider line can be very, very long. Single rider is never a guarantee that it's gonna be a shorter wait and you cannot request in single rider. I think that goes without saying, but I noticed a lot of the cast members are reiterating that today and saying that because I think a lot of people are requesting specific spots and areas they wanna ride on. And single rider is not, that is not the case with single rider. You get what you get. Beggars can't be choosers. You're just getting in the line for a short wait, not for a specific row or a specific seat. So I think that's silly to request. Don't make the cast members have to say no to you. Just do not request anything. It's a lot easier. Save yourself the trouble and save them the trouble. Just get what you get. You know, just be happy that you didn't have to wait in a long line on that one. On Soren, I was in the bottom end row and it's not really the best seat. It's a little curved from there and you can see people's feet your face but I'm not complaining you know I wasn't gonna ask or request for a specific role obviously because I did single rider so cars was not as bad as I thought it was gonna be 29 minutes is not a low low wait but it's not that high for a 105 minute standby that's really not that bad to wait only 29 minutes to get on the ride Okay, so that was really cool. If you guys know Steffi Wall, uh, Stephanie Wall, she uh, performs with Franklin Wall, a group, uh, it's a country western group. Very good performers. She performs at Disney though sometimes, and I haven't seen her in a really long time. They used to be at Disney under the name Girls Night Out. Now they are hiatus. So I didn't realize until I heard her voice while I was walking by, I'm like, yeah, I know that voice. So I had to go watch her show and got to say hi to her. It was good to see her again. It's been a long time since I've seen her. And uh, yeah, if you guys are here during the Food and Wine Festival, definitely watch Hiatus. They don't have a regular schedule. They're not like every Wednesdays or anything like that. They are uh, sporadically scheduled. So just check the schedule on the app or online and you can find when they're gonna be playing. But definitely check out Hiatus. It was a lot of fun. They play a lot of 90s songs and they play 
theme songs, cartoon theme songs. They played DuckTales and they played Rescue Rangers theme song. They played a song for uh, Powerline song, Stand Out, from the Goofy movie. They played Goof Troop. They played Darkwing Duck, the theme song. They played a lot of different theme songs that you'll know, especially if you're a 90s kid. They are fantastic. Steffi's one of the best performers I've ever seen in my life. So good to see her back at Disney, though. Make sure you guys catch that. I'll put in a couple of minutes of clips here. I, I want to put on more, but I don't want to make this video too long for you guys. But definitely worth putting a couple minutes of performance in here. She's awesome. So good to see her again, too. So the last ride I'm gonna try out is Goofy Sky School. The only two that I didn't do were Grizzly River Rapid. And I'm not gonna do Grizzly River Rapids because I don't wanna get wet. I did that last week with my friends and I got soaked. I did that just a couple of days ago. And it's generally a five or 10 minute wait at this time of year. So they might not even do the single rider. It's not really gonna save you any time. It's pretty much a walk-on. When we did it on Sunday, it was a walk-on. And I checked right now and it's a 10 minute wait. So you're really not gonna have to queue up for that one. I don't think single rider's really gonna help. And the other one I didn't do was Web Slingers. I'm not a big Web Slingers fan. It's definitely not my favorite attraction by a long shot. It's one of my least favorite attractions, unfortunately. And to be honest, that one's not gonna save you that much time either because it's a 20 minute wait for that one if you do standby and that way you can ride with your whole group. If you split up, they might not even do single rider if it's at a 20 minute wait. They might only do single rider when it's a higher wait. So it's really not gonna save you that much time anyways, but those two I'm gonna skip for today. All the rest are hopefully helpful tips that you guys saw what you can do on single rider. So let's go try Goofy Sky School. This is gonna be a 50 minute standby wait. So let's go see what it's like without standby just doing the single rider. Alright, so Goofy Sky School took three minutes. That is worse than Matterhorn. I swear, people hate on Matterhorn. Goofy Sky School is fun, but that thing jerks you around. The stopping, the abrupt braking at the end of the ride really slams you forward multiple times. It gets you. It really uh, gets you right in the stomach, too. And it's also the hardest ride to get in and out of, in my opinion, in all of Disneyland and DCA. Man, I'm not even that tall. I'm just under six feet tall. And it is very difficult to get your knees into that little tiny car. And to get out at the end is also very difficult. Really fun though. I'm glad I did that one. It was a 50 minute wait. There was only two people in front of me, just two people in front of me in single rider. So it only took three minutes to get on the ride. That's no wait at all. So that's really awesome. Saves the 50 minute standby wait. So anyways, I am hungry again and I'm gonna end the night by grabbing a piece of pizza. This is a food and wine festival specialty at Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta. So we're gonna go try that and grab some dinner and then I'm gonna call it a night. Ooh, look at the moon tonight. It's right above the sign up there. Just a little sliver moon. All right, so I'm at Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta, and this place has one of the best slices of pizza in both parks, in my opinion. Their specialty pizzas are always very good for the most part. So let's try the barbecue chicken pizza. 
This is pretty basic, but I love barbecue chicken pizza. This piece in particular was the last one they had, and it looks pretty sad. The toppings are not distributed evenly, and my favorite part of barbecue chicken pizza is the cilantro on it. There's literally one little minuscule piece. Chicken, red onions, cilantro, a house-made barbecue sauce, just like the California Pizza Kitchen. There are some very hungry ducks. They're quacking at me over here. I don't know if you guys can hear them over the music. They're very hungry. They're going quack, 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 quack. But, um, yeah, I am not impressed at all. I made barbecue chicken pizza just at home a couple of weeks ago, and it was way better than this. The chicken itself, let me try that on its own. Okay, I will say the chicken itself is moist, and it has a good barbecue seasoning flavor to it. I like the red onions on it. I'll start with the good parts of it. The barbecue sauce is different than your typical bottled barbecue sauce, and it does taste house-made. It does taste good, but this pizza is incredibly stale. It has been sitting there for a really long time. It's not even warm anymore. They keep them under the heat lamps, and this is cold, and it's really crunchy, really tough on the crust, not in a good way. It's very, very stale, not fresh. They should not be serving pizza for $10 that's this stale. That's really disappointing. Really, really disappointing. I'd give this a 6 out of 10, 5 out of 10 even. It's really, really not good. I might try it again sometime because I like the elements on it. And this piece also only had toppings towards the front of it, which is really a bummer. I wish the toppings were evenly distributed. These ducks are right here next to me. It's really funny. But I wish that it was evenly distributed toppings instead, and I wish it was fresh. I think if this was fresh, it could have a good shot at having an 8 or a 9 score. This is terrible, though. I would definitely not recommend this. It's not good at all. Like a 6 or a 5 probably at best, just because it's so stale. So, oh well, at least we gave it a try. I normally like boardwalk pizza and pasta, but I definitely don't like this. I couldn't recommend this. I might try it again because the Food and Wine Festival goes on for a very long time. So I might give it a try one more time. But this current slice rating it, I could not recommend it. Definitely skip this one. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining me on this adventure, this single solo adventure. I did almost all the single rider lines that you can do in both parks. I hope that clarifies any confusion that you had about how single rider works and how to go about using it, whether or not you go through the exit or through a special entrance. So I hope that was a little bit of a single rider guide for you guys. I appreciate each and every one of you and until next time, take care. The restaurant right across the way and there's sheet seated shade there is shady shaded seating